Okay, so pretend for a second that someone owes you money. Now it's been a couple of weeks and you're looking to get that cash. Now let me ask you, how eager are you to get that cash? How badly do you want that from them, what they owe you? Well, just as you're eager to get the cash that's owed to you, so are businesses. And that is what the accounts receivable turnover ratio is all about. How often do businesses collect the cash from their customers that's owed to them. So in this video today, I'm gonna to go through what is accounts receivable turnover ratio, how do we calculate it, and we're gonna go through a big practice problem. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about what is accounts receivable turnover. Now, turnover, when you think of turnover, you think of flipping. So kind of like real estate, right? You buy a house, you repair it, and you flip it, right? It's a turnover. Or I'm sure you've heard of this as well um, in like a workplace. They talk about employee turnover rate. Employees uh, join the organization, they work there a bit, and then they quit or they get fired. And that's a turnover. Same deal kind of here. Accounts receivable turnover. Think about you get accounts receivable, meaning a promise to pay. And I'll write that. So that's essentially what it is. Accounts receivable is a promise to pay the company. So you get that. But the question is, is how often do you get that promise to, that promise that someone's going to pay you and then they finally pay you? That's kind of what we're trying to figure out here is how often, or you can say how frequent, do you turn, so turning accounts receivable AR into cash? So how often do you collect on that cash? It's very important. Now, also something to think about here, so accounts receivable turnover, right? You wanna think, how often am I doing it and is that a healthy number? Is that healthy for a business? And to really figure that out, you have to compare. So you compare that number to previous years and industry. So you gotta to compare to both to really make sure that that works. Now, sometimes you might not have the industry average and that's okay. You can look at your past years and see how am I doing? How often am I turning my accounts receivable into cash? How often am I collecting uh, accounts receivable? Okay, learning checkpoint number one. Define accounts receivable turnover ratio. Is it A, how quickly businesses pay off their accounts payable balance? Is it B, how often businesses collect cash on their outstanding accounts receivable? Or is it C, when businesses receive cash in advance for services to be performed in the future? Once again, define accounts receivable turnover ratio and go ahead and comment your answers below, whether it's A, B, or C. Okay, so next let's figure out how do we calculate accounts receivable turnover? There is a formula to it. So the first step that you're gonna do, and I'll do step one here. So step one is you need to average the accounts receivable, and I'll call it AR, in current and past year. Meaning you look at your current year, whatever you're doing the formula for, and you look at the last year as well, and you have to average them together. So average, if you recall, it's just the sum of the two years divided by two. That's it. Super simple. And then step two, you're going to plug that into a formula, and it's going to look like this. So this is step two. You take your net sales and I'll go over what that is, and you divide it by your average accounts receivable, and I'll just call it AR for short. 
take your net sales and divide it by average accounts receivable. So that's the formula. Now in next in the problem, I'll show you how to calculate net sales and calculate average accounts receivable using numbers. So let's go ahead and check that out in a sec. Okay, learning checkpoint number two. What is the first step in calculating accounts receivable turnover ratio? Is it A, you divide it into net sales, B, you calculate net sales, or is it C, calculate average accounts receivable? Again, what is the first step in calculating accounts receivable turnover ratio? Is it A, B, or C? Comment your answers below. Okay, so now to the practice problem here. Let's go through it, and then we're going to calculate accounts receivable turnover ratio for 2020. Now, so here's the for, uh, here's the problem. Johnson Corp reported a, and that's a typo, reported 340,500 in accounts receivable. So that's going to be for a particular year. And let me move this down a bit. Okay, and they reported that in 2019. And then 545,800, sorry if that's, uh, I'll just rewrite that so you can see it. 545,800 at the end of 2020. Okay, so we have the two years. Now their sales for these two years were 1,345,000, and I'll just underline it, and 2,430,000. In 2020, they had 135,000 that were reported as sales discounts. Calculate the accounts receivable turnover ratio for 2020. So the first thing we need to do, remember step one, that's gonna be, you're gonna average your accounts receivable. So let's add. So you see here, they have 34,500 at the end of 2019 and 545,800 at the end of 2020. We have to add those up and divide by two. So take 340, 500 plus 545, 800, and then divide those by two. So let's go ahead and do that, get your calculator out, and divide by two. And you get 443,150. So that's the first step. Step two, if you remember, you're just plugging it into that formula. So we're going to plug that in. But first, we need to take our net sales. That's the first part of the formula. Now, our net sales will be this. It's going to be our sales, and we're just going to use 2020, right? You, don't, you can ignore 2019. You do not need it because we're only doing 2020 here. So take your sales, which is 2430600. We're going to subtract this sales discount. Net sales is your sales minus sales discounts and sales allowances. They just give you sales discounts here. So we have to subtract that first. Then we divide the whole thing by the average accounts receivable, 443150. So do what's in parentheses first. So 2430600 mm -hmm. minus 135,000. Now you take that number, which is 2295600, divide divided by the 443150 accounts receivable. And there we go. So our turnover is going to be equal to 5.18 times. So that's what that represents. And I'll call it AR turnover. And that is our answer. So to recap here, we talked about what accounts receivable turnover was. It's how often you're turning over your accounts receivable, how often you're flipping accounts receivable into cash. 
Or you could say, how often are people paying you in cash? And that really is influenced by uh, your, uh, I guess your sales policies, making sure that people pay on time. It's influenced by discounts because discounts, you're incentivizing people to pay you faster. So if you give more discounts for early payment, um, people will pay faster and you're gonna have a better accounts receivable turnover rate or ratio. So those are some important things that will help um, give you a better accounts receivable turnover ratio. Now, 5.18 times, we don't know if that's good or not. We have to evaluate previous years. It's good to look at the industry and we, we can't do that in this problem, but that's also really important to make sure you can evaluate that. So that's kind of what accounts receivable turnover ratio is. We talked about what it was, we talked about the formula and how to calculate it, the two steps. Then we did a big practice problem for you to understand how that works. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. I know I enjoyed making it for you. Please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps grow the channel. I really appreciate it. And each and every week, I'm gonna be releasing two new videos. So make sure you hit that bell icon to get notified. And in the next couple of videos, we're gonna go through more accounts receivable turnover ratio the next video is going to be days sales outstanding. How do we calculate that? Which is going to be related to this video here. And then lastly, we're going to evaluate Amazon. Look at their accounts receivable turnover ratio, day sales outstanding, and do a full evaluation of what that means. So once again, thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next couple of videos in this series.